I'm going to show the assembly for the functional thrust reversers that I built for my model of the Trent 900 high bypass engine as found on the A380. It's kind of a standoff scale model, but uh, turned out pretty good. Anyway, I'm going to take it step by step, give you a little bit of background on it, and show you a few things to watch out for, and then show you how to install them on the uh, finished model. All right, as you can see here, I've got everything laid out here in front of me. Tools, parts, glue. There's the uh, actual nacelle components for the reverser. There's a new base for the engine. And of course, there's the uh, original engine with the non-functional reversers on it, which is here in the foreground, is the left-hand functional thrust reverser already completed, ready to go on. Okay, before we get started, I want to show you one of the prototypes that I built kind of proved the concept out. I actually went through about uh, three prototypes like this before we got everything to fit. Um, what you see here is of course the uh, inner cowling. There's the uh, transitioning cowling or trans cowl. You see the way they move together. There's blocker door, blocker drag link, and of course you see the uh, slide pins there and the cascade. And it's uh, cut away so you can see what's going on here. Uh, as you can see, what we have here is basically a cross-section of the uh, thrust reverser. Uh, air comes in here from the uh, uh, low-pressure fan and exits straight out to the back side in uh, normal flight. For reversing function, the transcal slides backward. The drag link pulls the blocker door down in the way. Uh, air has nowhere to go at the, that point. Uh, it becomes kind of stagnant and non-stationary or non-moving down here in this bottom corner. Uh, goes around the bull nose here through the cascade. Cascade kind of straightens the flow out and uh, diverts the flow back at about a 45 degree angle towards the front side of the airplane. I wanted you to see what we had here before we got started so you kind of get an idea of exactly how this thing operates, much like it does on the real airplane. Okay, the first thing you want to do is get your uh, cowls, blocker doors, and your drag links, and size all the holes in them. What I found works best on sizing the holes is I took a piece of the uh, brass rod, like is going to be used for one of the guide rods, kind of sharpened the end of it a little bit, uh, took a file and just put uh, a series of uh, uh, cuts on the side of it, and this forms kind of a reamer. I've already run this thing through there several times. It takes a little bit of time the first time you do it, but basically just run that through there, twisting it, and it just sizes those holes. Now, these holes on the uh, stationary cowl uh, don't need to have much clearance, but you do need to be able to get the rods in and out without too much resistance. Got two on the bottom and uh, two on the top like so. All right. Same thing on the trans cowl. These are actual bearings that need to slide nice and smoothly on that rod. So you want to make sure you have plenty of clearance on those uh, for them to move freely. Of course, not so much clearance that uh, uh, get a lot of slop in it. I've done the same thing for the uh, one millimeter diameter uh, uh, blocker door pins. Got a piece of one millimeter brass rod. I've sharpened the end of it, put a series of cuts in it, and you just need to run those things through all of those holes just to size them, make sure there aren't any burrs, no flashing in there. Should be a nice slip fit in there. Same thing with on all the blocker doors. Make sure it'll slide through there. You don't want any real play in it, but you don't want any drag either. Okay. The drag links, uh, I highly recommend when you print these things that you do them on a small raft. Um, these things don't have a lot of surface area on your printer bed, and at the same time, if you don't have the exact right amount of uh, squish gap on the uh, print nozzle, the overall thickness of these things is going to suffer greatly. If you do it on a raft, it pretty much solves all the problems. Uh, when you get done with these things printing, there isn't much of a hole in them. It, they take quite a bit of work to open up. 
I was afraid to open it up too much on the actual STL uh, because different printers uh, function differently and if I open it up to make it work on mine, it may be too loose on somebody else's. But again, just kind of work that through there, ream them out, and you're ready to go. Of course, don't forget on your stationary cowl to check your hinge points on here as well. Again, you want to be able to slide freely, but you don't need a whole lot of play on those. First thing we want to do is assemble the drag link to the blocker doors. Drag link comes through the front side of the blocker door. Um, I found a pair of hemostats really comes in handy for this. These things have a tendency to just fly somewhere unknown. So anyway, put it through there. Slide it through with the hemostat. Let it go. And then with a pair of needle nose, just give the end of it just a little bit of a twist. And I think I'm going to get me a different set of pliers. Okay, point on those was just a little bit too fine. Now when you bend those things, you don't really need a whole lot on there, just enough to keep it from sliding back out again. In fact, there's, if there's enough drag on your blocker door, you almost don't even need to bend the end of that thing. They're not going to go anywhere. Okay, at this point I have all my blocker doors uh, put together with their drag length. Pivots nice and freely there. Very little play in it. Very little drag. You want to make sure your uh, pins don't take up too much space. There's only so much room for them in a little pocket on the trans cowl. Next on the trans cowl, there's a little uh, latch here that holds the hinge pin in place on those. Pretty easy to put those in. Oh, wrong one. Here's your hinge. Now you want to make sure you match these things up with the shape of the pocket. Like so. Your retainer is on this side. Long side of the pin goes in first. Kind of push that over in behind that latch. Let her pop into place. It's not going anywhere. Works nice and free. Let's put the last one in place. Again, want to match up that shape. There's my latch. Long end goes in first.
Okay, at this point, it's a good idea to pre-check your guide pins and the trans cowl uh, movement before you go any further. Uh, if there's any fitting issues, you wanna work those out now before you go any further. So we wanna make sure these go in there. Now on the drawing, I show that there's one end of this thing that really ought to be tapered a little bit. And that goes in without any problem at all. No problem on that one. Good fit there. And a good fit there. All right, to keep these blocker doors from flopping all over the place and getting in my way, I'm gonna tape them down right now. Just enough to keep them from swinging free. Okay. Probably should have done the test fit on this thing before I put all those on, but either way. All right, now when you're installing these things, the long one goes closest to the uh, center. Slide that in there. Now when you slide them in, do not push them in all the way. You wanna have enough left hanging out to hold on to to get them back out. If they go all the way down in there. It's not that you can't get them out, but it's a little bit more difficult. So let's put the short one in on the outward side. Long one towards the middle again. Short one on the outward side. Before we go too much further, I'm going to go ahead and put the screws in place to hold those down. Okay, had to find my screwdriver. Just barely snug them down. It's not going anywhere. Everything's in there, and it moves fairly free. A little bit of binding is actually those drag links catching down in there. Looks good. All right, so we're just gonna back these screws off a little bit. Don't need to take them out. Aside for the moment, set the trans cowl aside. Now it's time to uh, assemble the cascades. Two of the cascades have a notch on the outboard side, and that's to actually clear that retaining screw for that guide pin. On these cascades, it's a good idea to uh, run a file around that outside edge and make sure you don't want to have any flashing, no elephant's foot or anything on there. That's going to keep that thing from sitting down completely into place. Just snug them a little bit. Doesn't have to be real tight. You want to make sure that thing sits all the way down in there, level and straight. If it's sitting up at an angle, it's going to catch on the uh, slide on the trans cowl. Do the same thing on the one on the opposite end. Looks like it's 
gone in there well. The remaining four are all identical. You notice on these cascades, they're curved on the outer surface just like they would be on the uh, real aircraft. The backside is flat. That's not scale, but it sure makes it a lot easier to print these things. No supports required. Okay, so all the cascades are in place. Looks like they're fitting very nicely. It seems to be sticking out a little bit further. Let's see if we can push it up in there. Yeah. All right. Cascade rear bracket. These things are almost to hold themselves in place with just that one screw, but this is the way it is on the real aircraft, and it certainly doesn't hurt here. Let's put one in a cascade just to hold it for the moment. I'm not even going to tighten that down all the way. Leave it a little bit loose. Let these things kind of find their own home. Making sure those things are lined up. And then we get one screw on each end. And you're putting a screw into plastic. These things don't need a whole lot of torque. They hold on really well. I love these little screws. They kind of cut their own threads. Uh, the only downside to them is you can put one in a hole twice, maybe three times, uh, but each time you do it, it's cutting just a little bit more material out, so you don't want to do it any more than you have to. So once you put a screw in, plan on it staying there. Okay, so cascades are all in place. Looks great. Okay, trans cow with the blocker doors, drag links. We want to make sure those drag links are in the forward position. Slide that thing into place, like so. Make sure those drag links are forwards, and they are. And then we put our guide pins back in. Beautiful. Now we're ready to put the last of the links in. It's probably about the hardest part right here. All right, hemostats. Get that drag link in its corresponding hole there. And go.
Now, although I did check the fit on all my holes ahead of time, this is the first time this cowl has ever been put together. There's actually a little bit of an indentation on the stationary cowl. That drag link will actually pop down into that indentation, helps hold it in location while you're putting that pin in. And we have to put this one in from the opposite side. Oh, got to pull that tape off. Looks great. All right. Kickstand. This kickstand is the same as it was on the standard non functional cowls. This hole may require a little bit of sizing as well. Work that in there, work it past that hump, and it's good to go. The upper alignment pins are actually located on the pylon. Just have clearance holes here. That's what keeps this uh, cowling lined up on the finished model. Uh, the lower alignment pins, you have a set of pins on one half uh, or on one of the reversers only. The other one just has the hole, so I'm going to put those in now. I suggest also making these on a raft. They're very small, have very little surface area, and uh, even with a raft, you can print all three of these things in two or three minutes. Make sure it's in there all the way. One end of that pin is slightly larger in diameter than the other. You want to make sure that you're not try putting the slip fit side in. You want to put the side that's a little bit on the tight side. And those are in. And it doesn't make a difference which side these things go on or which cowl, as long as you only put them on one side. Just a very small amount of CA. Probably should have used thin on this. Okay, wiped off the excess. Accelerator. And we're good to go. All right. So we've got our alignment pins kickstand. The only thing missing right now is the magnet. I've already got the magnet put in on the other cowl right there and it doesn't really make any difference which way north and south is as long as you have it one way on one side and another, the other matching way on the other. So we put that on there. That tells me the side that has to be facing outboard. So index finger is out. Let's turn that over. Drop it down in there. Double check. Yep. Okay, try that again. Make sure we have the right side. Index fingers on the outboard side. Let's turn that over. Put it in there. Let's try that again. And we do have it right. All right, more CA. Now 
that point we pretty much have a finished cowl. Okay, now at this point we've got the uh, finished engine. I'm going to show you how to remove the existing non-functional reversers and we're going to put the actual functioning reversers in place. First thing we want to do is replace the base. The original base didn't have enough room for the uh, reversers to actual function, so I've got a new base I've got to put it off. That gives a little bit extra room back here on the back side for those to operate. The uh, forward fairing for the pylon, it's just held in place with magnets. Take it off. Open up the fan cowl, pull the hinge pin out, and set that aside for a moment. And then here we have the non-functioning reverser. Magnet holds it pretty good. Pull the hinge pin out of it. And as you can see, it looks the same, but there are no blocker doors in there. Set that aside. Here you can get a good view of the, uh, the whole engine. Real nice to be able to remove those cowls to take a look at things. All right. right hand assembly. I'm going to make sure we have two hinge pins here. The shorter one is the one that goes on the actual reverse. Prop rod goes up in this area here. You see the alignment pins on the pylon. I want to match those up with the alignment holes. And we're in there. Slide the hinge in. And that one's on there. And cowl. And then we turn the whole thing around, do the other side. And cowl off. Functioning reverser off. Again, this is the first time these have gone on. Let's hope they work. <laughs> Line up the pins. Here, the uh, magnet catch on the bottom side. The shorter pin goes on the back. And there we have it. Pile on fairing, just snaps into place. Magnus is all that holds it. And there we have the finished model. Let's look back at the right hand side. Open up that fan cowl. Engage the prop rod. Open up this reverser. Put the prop rod on it. Same thing on the other side. And there we have it with everything opened up. Okay, I'm going to get down to where we can actually see what's going on. All the cowls are open. You can see the rest of the engine up on the inside of there. 
And the finishing touch, of course, is we have a motor on here to make everything spin at about 72 RPM. The entire motor assembly is located in that uh, cone. Eight AA batteries, motor, electronic switch, push button on the back side. Just kind of push the uh, plug in place and twist it to lock it. And at this point, we'll close it all back up. Close out the reversers first. Magnet catches them, alignment pins hold them good on the bottom side. Prop rod, fan cowl. And they're closed. And there you have the finished engine. So there you have it. I've had a lot of fun in building this thing, designing it. I hope uh, somebody else get as, gets as much enjoyment out of it as I have. Um, if you've got any questions or any comments, want to see anything different on it, uh, let me know. Send me an email. Send me a message. Uh, I'm on Thingiverse, uh, GrabCAD, and on Calls3D. Give me a buzz. Thanks.